Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to the Empower Cast iWork series. This is episode 9 of a 12 part series. In episodes 9 through 12, we focus on the image fill feature in the object inspector. And for this episode, we're going to look at choosing an image and the scale to fill option of the image fill selections. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use Keynote. Again, these rules from this tutorial will apply to pages and numbers and also iWeb. I'm just going to choose any theme and I'll get rid of the default text boxes. In this tutorial, we're going to spend a minute looking at the best way to go out to the web to find an image. So my favorite way to fetch an image from the web is using Google. And I'm just going to launch Safari here. And the Safari interface has a Google search box in the upper right corner. But if you're using a different browser or maybe a PC, you could easily just navigate to Google. So that's what I'll do. So from the Google homepage, I'm going to enter a search term into the search field. And we're going to look for a picture of a watermelon for our demonstration. Now, Typing your search term into the Google search field and clicking on search or hitting the enter key brings you to Google's index and some of your links are going to be sponsored or advertisements in other words and some of your links are going to be information that you're not particularly interested in. I get right to the images by clicking on the images link in the upper left corner which is here. That allows me to bypass having to sift through the many websites that contain information or images of watermelon. So if you look over in the search term, we've got 9,470,000 indexed pages that have something to do with watermelons, either imagery or information. So to bypass that, I just click on the images link in the top left. And that gives me a page of thumbnails where I can select an image. Now, if I see an image I like on this thumbnail index from Google Images, I can easily grab that image and drag it from the index page right to my desktop. And I do actually like this image of a watermelon. It's a nice representation. It's simple and it's got a clean background. Simply dragging the thumbnail to my desktop, however, results in a tiny image which typically becomes pixelated whenever I try to use it in any larger size. As a matter of fact, you can see on my desktop that image is 143 by 108 pixels. So in other words, it's postage stamp size. If I were to try to use that in say a keynote presentation or a pages document, it would look very pixelated. We're going to leave that on the desktop so we can see the difference between that and if you go back and actually click on the thumbnail of the image you're interested in it usually takes you to a page where there's typically a lot of information you're probably not interested in but Google provides this handy link at the top of the page which allows you to just jump directly to the full-size image by clicking on see full-size image this really cuts through a lot of the junk and advertisement and things that you truly weren't interested in. So if I click see full size image, there is a nice picture of a watermelon perfect for the project that I want to create. So I'm just going to click and drag that from the Safari window onto the desktop. At this point I can just quit Safari or use the back button to get back to the index. Maybe search a little further for another picture. You can see here when we clicked on the images link, our search was narrowed from the 9 million pages to 4,300,000 images that are tagged watermelon. When I'm selecting an image, I'm typically looking for one that has a clean background because I may intend to isolate that image or use it to wrap text or use it as an icon on a page or in a presentation. So knowing that, an image like this one here probably wouldn't work out so good because there's a very busy background with a lot of inconsistent colors. I'm looking for something with a nice clean background making it much easier to isolate the image that I'm looking for. 
And we're just going to choose this image. Remember, dragging the thumbnail to the desktop gets us a very tiny version of that image. But actually clicking it and then going right up to the C full size image gets us that image in the original size. So I'm going to drag that, drop that on the desktop. So I'll quit Safari and we'll get back over to Keynote. And in Keynote, I want to demonstrate that the quality of the image varies greatly with what you've selected from the Google search results. So the thumbnail is going to get you this type of quality. Where, let me just stretch that up a little bit. And the full size image that we click through to gets you this quality. So you can really see a huge difference in the quality of the two images. Let's look at the same thing with the second image that we found. As I enlarge that image, I get a very pixelated and degraded quality image. And the full size image gets us a very nice high quality version of that image. So always be sure to click through to full size image if you find one that you like. Okay, now down to the image fill feature in the graphic inspector. So let's create a graphic here by going to the shapes menu and I'm just going to choose a rounded rectangle here. And that rounded rectangle will be where we drop in our image using the image fill feature. So back up to the inspector that we've been using for this entire series. And under the fill menu here, We've used gradient fill and we've used advanced gradient fill. We've used color fill. Now we're going to go down to image fill. So when I click on image fill, I get a prompt, sort of this open dialog box that allows me to go through anywhere in my finder and grab an image to fill that shape with. What I like about this, and you may have to scroll to get it, but in this left column here, if we look down through to the bottom, I've got an option to view under media my iPhoto library by clicking on the photo option under media. So I'm going to click the watermelon and click open. Scale to fill takes the image you've selected and sets the parameter that the image must always be touching all four sides of the shape. If you think about it, it's pretty simple. No matter how I resize this particular shape, the image is going to resize, always ensuring that all four sides of the object are populated by the image. So if I grab the corner and I start to resize this, no matter how I resize it, all four sides of the object are going to be populated by that image. This is certainly not the most effective way to place an image or work with a single particular image in your document. Remember, this particular graphic started as a simple shape with a color fill. We changed it to image fill, which then asked us to select an image for this little well. Anytime in the Mac OS you see a square, and it usually has rounded rectangle corners with an inner shadow, like this one has here, that's referred to as a well. And a well typically will accept media that you drop on top of it. So this particular well will accept images that you drop on top of it. So instead of having to re-choose the image using the choose button here, I can simply drag an image from the finder and drop it right on top of that well. You see my mouse cursor gives me the plus indicating that when I drop it on. That's now the image that's going to fill that graphic that we created. I hope you enjoyed episode 9 of the EmpowerCast iWork series. As always, we appreciate your ratings, comments, and please subscribe so you can be notified of the next episode. This is Pete. Thank you for tuning in. You cause you can, so you do. We're feeling so good just the way that we do when it's not in the afternoon.